Hey y'all, today I'm gonna show you how you can be a crock star in the kitchen by making our best ever slow cooker roast. Oh, we're having a whole lot of fun. Oh my goodness. Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with me, the good old boy. And we're cooking up another dish from recipesthatcrock.com, my beautiful wife's cook -a blog. And I feel kind of naked today. I mean, I'm, I'm even wearing pants. You can't tell, but I am. Miss Ad's off doing her schoolwork right now. Chris is pounding at the keyboard, typing away, creating new recipes and more content for you guys. And we still need to get some videos up to keep things rolling here. So I'm down here in the kitchen, and we're picking one of our favorite recipes, one of y'all's favorite recipes, if you're following along with the blog. And that is the best ever slow cooker roast. I mean, who doesn't love a good roast potatoes and carrots? And this is a super, super easy, super delicious way to make it. It is a long cooking recipe. This is not an instant pot recipe. Do we have one like that? Yes, I'll put it down in the link below. But this is a special, really, really good recipe that takes a little bit of work, but there's a lot of payoff on the end because it's gonna taste good. And so what you're gonna need for this recipe are the following ingredients. Well, first you need some cow. You need a roast. It could be a chuck, it could be a rump, it could be a shoulder, it could be a London broil. I don't know, it depends on what kind of meat, what cut of meat you like. We like chuck roast. Um, Chris actually got this in a package of stuff that came from the store, thanks to Walmart and their online shopping, and we just picked it up and they threw it in the car. Not really threw it in the car, but they put it in the car for us. Any kind of roast, I like roasts that have some marbling in it, a little bit of fat, you know, because I think the fat is really, really good when it breaks down over a long cooking period. But you need a two to three pound roast to make this magic happen. You also want some potatoes. Now, I'm thinking Lou, when she created the post, probably used some russets, uh, maybe some of those big old Idaho potatoes. We love the red russets, the little red potatoes, and we like them unpeeled. We just like to slice them up. We like the skins. Again, it's your preference, whatever you guys like. You also need one onion that we're going to slice up, some carrots, because you can't have roast with potatoes and carrots without potatoes and carrots some baby carrots, about a pound bag, anywhere in there, and then you want three to four cloves of garlic, so cloves, not bulbs, cloves, and you also want to have a can of beef consomme, or if you have beef broth, beef stock, it's about the same thing, um, we've got a can just for good measure right now, some salt, some pepper, and then you want some flour. Now what we're going to do with this roast, first off, is we're going to sear it. I get a lot of feedback from folks when we make roasts and we don't sear it, say, oh you got to sear the meat. You don't got to sear the meat, you totally can if that's an extra step you want to take. Is it going to add more flavor, more texture? Absolutely. Can you do it without sear the meat? Absolutely. It depends on how many steps you want to take. We're going to sear the meat. So in my slow cooker, this is our Ninja uh, cooking system so we can saute and do different things in there and in my slow cooker I have about two tablespoons of oil and I'm gonna go ahead for now before I mess up here because you know I'm not perfect right I'm gonna go ahead and shut that off because that is starting to smoke and you, it, olive oil is what I'm using you can use canola you could use corn oil uh, don't use motor oil doesn't taste good it's really not good for you but we like to use olive oil because it's another flavor that we really like we love the flavor of olive oil but while that's heating up or as it is hot right now I'm gonna take my roast and I'm gonna cut four slits sort of deep maybe a inch or so three quarters of an inch to an inch deep in the roast you don't have to be exact turn it over and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side and all I'm gonna do is take my garlic and embed it push it down into that meat that's really gonna take that garlic flavor and really make it soak up into the beef so I've got those slits done and I need to get my garlic ready I've got my four cloves of garlic and I need to get that skin off so I'm just gonna take my knife smash down smash down smash down smash down now I should be able to peel that garlic husk off pretty easy just like that. There's one. There's two. And this is a big hunk of garlic, too. So that's okay because in our house we really like the garlic. We're not vampires. We don't want any vampires around. So we eat lots of garlic. It's also heart healthy, too. So that's a plus when you're in your 40s, I guess. All right. So now we've got our naked garlic. And all I want to do is I'm going to slice those long ways in half. 
Now, it's only me in the kitchen right now, so I can't really hold on to an overhead camera at the same time that I slice stuff because, well, I would probably end up slicing my fingers. So, long ways, like that. And then now, what I'll do, let me wipe my hand off, see if I can do this with the camera for y'all, is I just want to take one of those slices of garlic and just push it way down in that meat like that. I'll show you one more time. And that slit that I made, I'm just going to push that garlic down just like that. Alright, so I'm going to do that six more times. Two more times on this side. And then I'm going to flip this thing over. I'm going to do it again in those four slits I made on the other side. And again, this is really, really going to give a lot of flavor into that meat. I didn't really make that slit very good. I wouldn't be a very good surgeon, I don't think. But just like that. Alright, so now we've done that. Let me wash my hands real quick. And now I want to take some salt and some pepper on either side of it just to keep adding the flavors to the meat. Flip her over, do the same thing. Salt. It's going to help to make a good crust. Pepper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Do it again on this side. Uh oh. One, two, three. One of my garlic pieces fell out, so I'm going to make a new slit. It needed to go there anyway. Alright, so garlic goes in there. Now what I want to do is we're going to lightly coat this in flour. You're not going to dredge it. You're not making a chicken fried steak or anything like that. You're just going to put a little bit of flour on both sides and on the edges as well. What that's going to do, it's going to make a crust as this starts to brown up and it's also going to help to thicken all those juices later. And we're also going to have uh, some gravy with this later. Uh, when we're done with it, but it's also going to kind of thicken things up a little bit because who doesn't like a really good gravy with a pot roast, you know? So I have my flour, and all I'm going to do, like I said, just lightly coat all sides. That garlic does not want to stay in place. Get back in there. Pop my slow cooker on. Make sure everything's still staying hot. That garlic's gonna give me fits until I get it in there. And then the other side. So again, you're not dredging it. You don't want a thick coat of flour. You just want you just want it to look like that. And then now what I'm gonna do is I need to make sure that oil is all over the bottom of that pan. It is, it's hot because it's really runny. And then I'm just going to set that down in there. All right, wash my hands real quick and I'll show you. And that's what she looks like. She's just lightly coated. I mean, you can still see the meat, but you can hear that bubbling. That's going to be cooking real good. That smells really good right now. It doesn't take long for that garlic to really start to make things smell good in this place. But all we want to do is lightly brown that on all sides. And while I've got that browning, now I'll get my veggies ready. I'm going to leave my baby carrots just the way they are. I'm going to take my onion. I'm going to cut it in half. I like that. And then lay it down. And I just want to thinly slice my onion. It's up to you if you guys want thick slices of onion, thin slices of onion. Dice the onion if you want to. But I think with the roast, I'd like to have it sliced. That way you get a little bit of onion that, that texture and that sweetness of that onion with the roast all at the same time. And I apologize if I sound a wee bit congested. I am getting over bronchitis. And ain't nobody got time for that. But I did. So it has really messed up my singing schedule for sure. Because I was getting pretty good at singing them high notes. And for the past week all I could do was a really good Barry White impression. So we'll be working on that this week. So I got my onion all sliced up. I'm going to take my taters and I'm just going to pour them. Uh, 
Lou does hers in long thin slices, like wedges. I'm just going to quarter these babies. And I think that will be perfect for what we got going on with this roast. That roast is smelling good. All right. Almost done cutting up potatoes. And you can, again, this isn't like one of those you have to do it my way recipes. If you want less potatoes and more carrots, more onions, less potatoes, it's whatever you want. Um, this is definitely not going to be a low carb recipe between the flour on the roast and the potatoes and the onions and the carrots because they've got lots of carbs in them too. But it's going to be a delicious meal and I am really happy that Chris is letting me make this because I love pot roast. My mom would make chuck roast or uh, round roast with potatoes and carrots all the time when I was a kid. And man, oh man, was it good. And I'm thinking this is going to be like that. So I got my taters and my carrots all chopped up. I'll just put them in the bowl. Let everybody meet at the party. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to give this a little toss. That way everything's pretty even. And you'll get some potatoes and some carrots and some onions scattered up all throughout that roast. Alright, so now I'm going to check my roast. See if I can do this with two hands. See what that bottom looks like. Oh yeah. Aha, you see that? That's that same piece of garlic right there that was trying to get away. Come here. Get back in it. And that garlic's already starting to break down. You're here. You stay in there. I swear it's like wrangling children. Maybe I should have sliced that piece of garlic up a little finer. But anyway, look how that flour and that beef is all starting to brown up right there. But I'm going to let this continue to brown on the other side. And then I'm going to do that same thing. I'm going to kind of roll it in the oil along the edges of the meat. That way it kind of browns up that fat that's on the outside of the meat as well. And it's going to look like this when it's done. All right, you can see where it's browned up really good on that side. And now I'm just taking my tongs and going along the edges because I want to sear up any of that fat right there and that meat. I want to sear it as well. Again, I'm not going to go chintzy with the steps on this. I want to Look at that. See how it's all browned up right there? So I'm going to continue to do that real quick and brown the other sides of the meat here. There's that other piece of garlic trying to jump out again. Again, I don't think I'd be a very good surgeon if I was inserting garlic into you. Alright, now again, I'm not trying to cook that meat. Don't bang metal on that or else your wife might come downstairs and beat you. Sorry, Chris. All right, so now I've got that done. I don't want to cook that meat like that. Though. I'm not trying to fry that where it's cooked all the way. So I'm going to stop the heat on that. And I'm just going to turn it over a slow cook. And I'm going to set it on low. And I'm going to take my taters and carrots and onions. And just put them right over the top. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. And then I'm going to take a little more salt and pepper. Not like that. We salted the meat pretty good, but you also want to salt these veggies. Pretty decently. And you can always add more salt later. And then I want to take my can of beef consomme. And I just want to pour it. <laughs> Evidently all over myself and my slow cooker. And hopefully get some on the meat and veggies. Just like that. And that's really going to intensify that meaty flavor. And that's it. That's going to cool off, actually, and those veggies are actually going to help that cool off as well. And then it's going to be on low, and you want to do this for eight hours. Again, you could do it on high for six, maybe four to six hours. The longer and the lower and slower that you cook that piece of meat, the more tender it's going to be. And I want a piece of meat that just absolutely falls apart in my mouth going along with those awesome veggies that we got in there. So I'm going to put my lid on it, set it for eight hours, and then we're going to come back and have an awesome dinner in three, two, one.
And we are back, and Miss Ad is done with school. She's joining me for this little trip down pot roast lane, as we want to call it, because we don't need that much pot roast and taters around here because of the whole low carb thing. So today is another special treat, and this is what it looked like after eight hours. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Look how those potatoes have kind of browned up in there, soaking in the juices of that meat, and you got them. Look at those onions, almost look caramelized. They've all wilted down in there, and of course you got them carrots right there, but here's what I want to do. Now, I have to be very careful because, again, this is a non-stick vessel, which means don't scratch it, which means I'm going to use a fork to be very gentle. I just want to see. Okay. Okay. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Watch me take this fork into this meat, and watch what happens. It just pulls away. Oh my goodness. It's shredded by Oh, that's all. Oh, girl, after my own heart. So I'm just going to take a little bit. If you would hold that plate right about there. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to get a little bit of that meat so we can get a good taste of it. Ooh, that is super hot. That just got done cooking, so that is super warm. After eight straight hours on low, and you see how well that meat just falls apart. We'll get a tater, and we'll get a couple carrots, and that's a good taste test right there. So we can set it down. Here you go. Here I go. Okay. So, so here's we'll the Split the tater right down the middle. Get a carrot. Get a tater. Some onions. A good hunk of that beef right there. Give me a minute, it's a hot one. It tastes like my mom's pot roast, her uh, roast potatoes and carrots. Those onions give it a serious flavor. That beef consomme is going to really strengthen and intensify the meat flavor in there. It's got that really good beefy flavor. And then those potatoes have just cooked down. They're super, super soft. And they've soaked up a lot of those juices that came from the beef and the consomme. And holy moly, they just kind of, they hold the party. You know, they got all the flavors of everything kind of soaked into those potatoes. The carrots are nice and soft. They got a little bit of a chew to them, but they're done, completely done. They're perfect. And they add a little bit of a sweetness along with that onion to that dish. I'm telling y'all, that right there will make any family happy. I'm definitely happy. That is fantastic. Now, one thing Aunt Lou said to do was that you could serve that with gravy. You totally can. I think the way that is right there is juicy enough, but if you want to add some gravy on the top of it, I mean, that's like icing on the top of a cake. So, to me, that's a winner. Winner, winner, pot roast dinner. Yeah. And we thank you for joining us for dinner. But if you like what you're seeing here, then if you would, give us a like down below. Also, if you have not become a member of the Croc Posse, click that little thing down below that says subscribe and you're automatically a member of the Croc Posse. And you need to click that little bell next to the subscribe button and that'll let you know by letting us know that you want to know when we put up a new video. What's that bell called? The ding -a -ling. The ding -a -ling. That's right, my little ding -a -ling. And most importantly, whatever you do, laugh often. Eat good food. And speak life. Bye, guys. If you want to see the latest, click on the left right here. If you feel like subscribing, click on the right, my dear. And if you think we're funny, enough to send us money, click the